printing can be expensive to get into, like really expensive. But your initial investment doesn't have to be that bad depending on how serious you wanna be about the whole thing. It helps to know what kind of screen printer you wanna be. Do you want to just print for yourself? Like maybe you have a brand that you wanna print for, or maybe you wanna start a small business and print for people in your community, schools, uh, other small businesses, bands. You know, who are you printing for? And if you know that, then you can kind of figure out uh, how much you need to put into it. No matter what your screen printing goals are, there's always going to be an initial investment involved. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. How much money do you really need to spend to get started in screen printing? Does anyone ever wonder what this stuff tastes like? It kind of looks like frosting. That's pretty gross. To get started in screen printing, you need these essential things. A press, an exposure unit, a dryer of some kind to cure your prints, a washout booth to clean and reclaim your screens, an inkjet printer for your film transparencies, plus all your supplies, you know, your inks, emulsion, screens, cleaning chemicals, you know, all that stuff. I'm gonna break this down further by detailing two different ways to get into screen printing. One, the cheap DIY way, which is the way I've been doing it, and two, the more expensive way in case money is no object to you. I'll also tell you what equipment I would go with if I was doing it all over again. And keep in mind, this is all geared towards beginners who have little to no experience with screen printing. The press is, in my opinion, the most important piece of equipment that you're gonna buy. Obviously, it's the thing that you are printing with, and I think the best kind of press to start with is at least a four color press. I mean, you might as well, because as soon as you master one color, you're gonna immediately want to jump into two or more colors. Now, you could start off with a really cheap press that you might find on eBay or Amazon, but in my opinion, those are very low quality. I would recommend something that's a little bit better built, a little more sturdy, if you're gonna go the more affordable route, then I would go with the Riley Hopkins 150 four color one station press. There's no micro registration, but that's okay. You can still do multiple colors. You just have to, you know, tap it into place. I mean, that's the press that I started with. I have since moved on to a Riley Hopkins Jr or a 250 as it's known now. But the 150 is still really good. I actually use it now for my live screen printing press. But if you've got a little bit more money, uh, I would go with the Riley Hopkins 250 or even the 300 if you've got the space for it. So if you go with the 150, that's about $500. But if you go with the 300, that's about $6,500. Now, let's assume you are starting out printing Plastisol ink. If that's your ink, there are a few ways to cure it. Conveyor dryer, flash dryer, uh, heat press, heat gun, or uh, maybe just sticking your shirt in an oven. Actually, maybe don't do that. I think no matter what your budget is, you should at least have a flash dryer in your arsenal. If you're going the cheaper DIY route, you can start with just a flash dryer and those will go for about $500. But if you've got a little bit more money, I would still buy a flash dryer, but I would also get a conveyor dryer. It just makes your whole operation a lot more efficient. They come in different sizes, uh, but I would say when you're first starting out, a decent sized conveyor dryer, like the Little Buddy, will run at about $2,500. This is where you are potentially going to save a lot of money because you can build your own exposure unit. As many of you know, I have built my own exposure unit and it's really not that hard to make one. I like to think of it as a light with a box around it, but it doesn't even need to be that. It can just be some two by fours that are drilled into each other with a light facing down. And you can make those for like, 50 bucks, or if you've got the money and you really don't wanna build anything, 
uh, you could just go out and get a base layer exposure unit. And if I were gonna go out and get one of those, I'd probably get one with the vacuum seal on it. Those go for about $3,000. The washout booth. It's an often overlooked piece of equipment. Nobody likes cleaning screens or reclaiming screens. Uh, and if somebody says they like doing that, they're probably a serial killer. You need to clean and reclaim your screens and you need to do it safely. You don't wanna just be doing it in your bathroom tub. So to do it cheaply, you could probably get away with just going down to like a Home Depot or a Lowe's and getting yourself a utility sink and maybe make like a makeshift uh, filtration system with some buckets. Maybe use the mesh from a screen as a, as a filter. I don't know, you can figure something out there. It probably cost you like 100, maybe $150. Or if you have the money, I would just go out and get yourself a decent washout booth. Uh, they cost about maybe six to $700. And then like a real deal filtration system would cost you about $1,000. An inkjet printer is important for printing out your film transparencies. And this is an area that could make or break your whole operation because your film print needs to be black, like super black. And that's because it needs to block the light from the exposure unit. So to get a good exposure and a good screen, then you need a good film positive. When you're starting out, I'm gonna recommend the same printer regardless of your budget. I would just get the Canon PIXMA IX6820, which is about $200. If you've got more money, I think you could get a fancier printer, but again, when you're first starting out, I think this printer pretty much covers all the bases and does everything you're gonna need it to do. But now might be a good time to talk about RIP software. This is one of those debatable things about screen printing. Do you really, really need RIP software? I'm still kind of on the fence about it, but yeah, you kind of do need RIP software. It makes everything so much easier. It'll handle all of your gradients and half tones, and it can actually better manage the ink output of your printer. For the latest version of AccuRIP uh, Emerald, it's about $300. But if you are on a tight budget, there are ways around using a rip. You can convert half tones on your own in Photoshop. You could print your film positive twice and double it up to make it darker. So if you're on a super tight budget, you could probably skip it in the beginning and just upgrade later on down the road. And so the only other thing we need to talk about are supplies and miscellaneous things you might need. There are quite a few essential supplies that you're gonna need up front. And rather than going over them one by one, I figured I would just put a shopping list on the screen and you can kind of go off of that. And the cheap versus expensive way of doing this uh, really depends on how much of these things you want to buy. So if you want to go light, I would start with this shopping list. Yeah, that's important. No, nope. yeah, you need that. Yeah, you're gonna need that for sure. Ah, oh, yes, and those, of course. Imagine doing the job without those. Or if you've got a little bit more money, I would go with this shopping list. Oh, yeah, see, a little bit more of those, that's good. Of course, those. Whoa, slow down there, Tiger. That's, uh, I don't even have that many. And that's super helpful. That, that right there, that, this thing, that is super helpful. So, in conclusion, how much does all this shit actually cost? If you're going the DIY route, like I went, then you're probably looking at an initial investment of about $2,200 give or take a couple hundred. And if you decide to go the other way, complete supermarket sweep on Ryonet's warehouse, you're spending closer to $17,000. And keep in mind, this is just to get started. I mean, there's plenty of other stuff I haven't gone over. You know, screen racks, drying cabinet, dip tank, you know, there's plenty of other things you could spend money on. This is really just the essential stuff that you need to get started right now. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all of that stuff. You know what to do. And I'll see you guys next time.